Hey guys and welcome back to the Coders Legacy channel. Today is going to be a very interesting video. I have something very interesting to talk about. It's Nutica, the Python library for converting Python files to a standalone exe. Now you may have already heard this before. This is nothing new. There are several libraries that can convert Python files to standalone executables like PyInstaller, CXFreeze, and Py2exe, and so on. What makes Nutica different? What makes it different from all the rest? Well, I came across Nutica a few weeks ago and well, it's pretty interesting because Nutica, you see, is a Python compiler. What it does is converts your Python code to C, the C programming language. And that is very interesting because it actually does two things, first of all. First of all, this actually improves performance, surprisingly. Well, not so surprising because everyone knows that Python code is a bit slow, but C on the other hand is much faster. So developers using Nutica have actually reported performance gains and I myself have also tested this. I ran some fairly normal code, bubble sort code, and tested it on Nutica and regular Python and Nutica actually performs faster. Like I got a 40 to 50% increase in speed. That's pretty awesome. All right, so I think I got a bit carried away over there. Let's actually begin the tutorial. All right, so pip install Nutica. This is gonna be the first thing you want to do. All right, this is gonna just say requirements already satisfied because I already have Nutica installed. Okay, so I don't need to do that. So once you guys have this installed, you need to actually know a few things first. First of all, Nutica, as I mentioned, compiles Python to C, okay? Or more specifically, it takes Python first, generates uh, binary code, then compiles that to C using a C compiler. So we need a C compiler. Now, Nutica will already take care of this for you if you do not have C installed. I happen to have C and C++ installed. Uh, I have the GCC compiler. It's already added to my, you know, environment variables. I'm using Windows, so, uh, it just auto detected that one. It didn't download one. Okay, let me just show you the Nutica page, the GitHub page over here. This they just tell you this over here. You need the C compiler, and written over here. And as you can see over here, it will be automatically downloaded if no usable C compiler is found. So don't worry. I'm just here to tell you that, just in case there are any issues. So just so you know, for your information. This here is the uh, program that we're going to be converting to an exe. Let me just run it once normally and show you what it's like. Okay, here it is. It's just a fairly basic thing. You import a CSV and then it draws a graph over there and the table shows the coordinates, etc., etc. Okay, never mind that. So anyways, back over here. What we need to do is Nutica dash dash standalone. Standalone means you want to generate a standalone executable. All right. And then we're going to do uh, the name of our file. Tutorial.py is the name of our file. Okay, make sure you execute this command in the same folder as your file. You can see I'm executing this command in the Nutica folder. And over here, I have tutorial.py in my Nutica folder. All right, now I'm going to begin running this code. I'll just expand this a bit so we can see it clearly and begin running. Okay, all right, hold on. I'm going to cancel the... I'm gonna, I, I, just, I just stopped this right here, okay? Control C. Now I'll scroll back up here and let's take a look at this. We got a warning. And what does this warning say? Now this warning says enable plugin is needed for take hinter, basically. Now this is a slight issue, I guess you could say. Nutica requires you to explicitly declare some of the libraries that you're using. There are only like four or five libraries like this, however, uh, which you need to do the to do this for, you need to do it for NumPy, I think, for matplotlib, for takinter, and two or three more. I think TensorFlow is one of them. Uh, so that's it. So don't worry, Nutica will, ju will just tell you if you're screwing up. So no, no need to worry too much. Just copy paste this from here, okay? Don't let the compilation finish because I assure you it will not work. Just control C it, stop it, and then resume. Now I will mention one, one more thing that there are normally a few other warnings over here, one or two other warnings that I already resolved. 
Nutica will, for example, tell you that you could you can install the ordered set library. It's spelled like this, ordered set. You can do pip install ordered set, uh, which will speed up the compilation process. And I think there will be one more warning. I can't remember what that for. What what's that for? Well, never mind. All right. So again, you don't need to do this. It's just an optimization technique that Nutica will tell you about. Anyways, just hit the enter command and let's get started. All right. So this is beginning to run. Now this is where I should tell you. Oh, look at that. I'm using NumPy. I guess I forgot about that. Am I? Oh, oh wait, no. I'm using matplotlib, which is using NumPy. So yeah. And I may have been wrong about the fact that you need to do this for NumPy. I mean, sorry, for matplotlib. Maybe I was just remembering that because it needed NumPy. All right, so I copy pasted enable plugin takeinter and enable plugin NumPy. So both of them are now included. All right, and just hit enter. Now let the compilation uh, proceed and we should not face any more warnings now. All right, anyways, let me just get back to what I was saying. Basically, the compilation process for Nutica can actually be a bit long. Yeah, like we're talking like for big applications, this is relatively a medium sized application or small actually, but I've actually used Nutica with a 4,000, 5,000 line code and it took me two hours, I think, if not more. So yeah, that's uh, Nutica's downside the initial compilation time is quite high. And uh, how do I put this? You can optimize that. You can optimize the compilation speed. One, install the ordered set library like I mentioned earlier. And secondly, you can make use of a cache system, actually, which Nutica does by itself. Um, Nutica will, I think, let me just, uh, is it mentioned over here somewhere? Cache. Ah, yes, here we go. So Nutica, over here you can see uh, CL cache. This is basically a cache that Nutica uses that once you do the compilation once, okay, you did the initial compilation and then you made some changes and then you want to recompile, uh, Nutica will detect which part was changed and will only recompile that specific part. So I've actually had moments with uh, Nutica where I, I've recompiled the entire thing in just a few minutes. Uh, so that's pretty cool. So the initial compilation is always going to be annoying. And the cache system is, uh, I think Nutica uses it by itself more or less, but I'll make a separate video on that. For those of you who do not have the cache enabled by default, I will make a video on how to, how to include that, how to include the cache. So anyways, that's just how Nutica works a bit. I just wanted to, to share that with you guys a bit. I'm going to pause the video now and resume it once Nutica is complete, the compilation process, which is gonna take some time, I think, because these libraries like matplotlib and numpy, they need to be entirely converted to C and C++, sorry, just C. And that, that takes some time. If you're just doing a simple Nutica script, this will just take minutes, okay? I've tested Nutica without any extra libraries, with some libraries, with a lot of libraries, and I'm just sharing my experience with you. I estimate that this is going to take around 40 minutes, basically, 40 to 50 minutes. It won't take longer than an, an hour. Anyways, I'm just going to pause the video right here. All right. All right. So our compilation is now complete here. And let me just scroll back up. I want to show you something. There's this uh, warning for the PYQT5 plugin, but we don't need to actually redo our thing, our compilation process, because PYQT5 is not being used in our application. And if I go here, all right, reveal in file explorer and go to our distribution folder. And you can actually see, by the way, the folders over here. Okay. So if I come down here and run our exe and looks like I forgot to disable the console, but as you can see, our application works. Okay. There's no error. But if you had forgotten, for example, to include the plugin for Takinter, it never would have, you know, ran. So that's kind of the deal here. The only reason this warning is thrown is because Nutica ended up, for some reason, 
including PYQT5 and PYQT6 into my application. This is because I had them installed and Nutica is normally pretty good at this kind of stuff. There's actually very little bloat inside Nutica as compared to other libraries like CXFreeze or PyInstaller, which generally just include a lot of extra libraries. Nutica is actually pretty good at that. So yeah, but if you want to avoid this problem, because as you can see here, let me show you the size of this folder is what 14 MB. All right. So if you want to reduce this and optimize your uh, size, because what's the size right now? It's 373 MB. All right. Uh, that's the second disadvantage, by the way, of Nutica. The first disadvantage being that its compilation process is, is a bit slow. And second, its file sizes are a bit bigger, generally speaking. You can optimize this too. We'll talk a, a bit more about that later. I should mention that Nutica is actually very fast when it comes to converting Python code that does not import any extra libraries. Or actually, that does not import any libraries that are not already in the standard Python library. Like, Takinter is already in the standard Python library, you don't need to install it. Same goes for stuff like uh, date time or the time module, the OS module, the sys module. So as long as you're just using these for a simple Python program, Nutica will compile your code in a minute or two. At least that's what it does on my system, just one or two minutes. And that's even faster, I think, than the other similar libraries like PyInstaller or something. The only problem is that Nutica doesn't scale very well and it just takes a very long amount of time once you begin adding libraries that are not in the standard Python, you know, library. But yeah, there's one more thing I want to tell you, uh, how to disable the console. Okay, it's actually given a warning right here. It gave it for PyQt5 and Qt6. I don't know why it didn't give it for Takinter. Weird. Okay, but never mind. All right, there we go. And hold on. Oh, okay, I missed out on, uh, all right, I missed a, a dash there. And by the way, one more thing, it took 45 minutes roughly for this application to compile. And this was considering that we had PyQt5 and Qt6, you know, packaged. If they were not here, chances are it would take less than 40 minutes. Okay. Uh, okay, I'm just going to pause the video right here and we'll resume once it's done. All right, so our compilation is complete now, and let's just go over to our distribution folder. And by the way, the build folder is basically an intermediate folder that just contains uh, a lot of the files, the C files and stuff, okay? You don't need to worry about it too much, just leave it be. I think it's used in the cache process as well. Okay, so this distribution folder is the one that we actually are concerned with. It's the one that we would give to somebody when distributing our application. It's also the one with the exe. So if I double click this exe now, you'll see the window pop up and there's no console window this time because we used the disable console option. Okay. Uh, and by the way, Nutica is actually really fast when it comes to loading up the exe. Like I've used PyInstaller before and it can take like 10 seconds on a similar application. Nutica is like two or three seconds on average. Okay. Other than that, um, I want to show you something. This warning over here for PyQt5. Now the deal is that I don't have PyQt5 in this application. You, you, you can't see it anywhere in the imports. So why is it here? Well, that's just because it happens sometimes. Nutica does make an effort to not include extra stuff. It has a plugin called anti-bloat that's enabled by default. So it does make an effort, but sometimes it doesn't always succeed. The best way to fix this and reduce the size of your exe, speed up the compilation process, is to use a virtual environment. Set up a new virtual environment, only install the libraries that you actually need, and then, you know, you're good to go. Because then everything will be optimized and better. I have a video on how to do that, specifically in the context of, you know, creating uh, exes, Python, Python file to exes. So I have a video on how to set up a virtual environment for that purpose. So I'll link that in the description below. Okay. Other than this, there's one more thing I want to tell you. 
just uh, ignore that command over there. I kind of want to uh, tell you about the one file option. Okay, the one file option is an alternative mode that you can use on Utica. If you don't want an entire folder, you can use the one file option. Standalone produces a folder, one file produces a single exe, a really big one, like 200 MB roughly uh, for this kind of application. I think generally it's a bit smaller than the standalone option. And you can even use optimization techniques to get it, get it down even further. All right, so um, I'm not going to run this command, otherwise it's going to take, I don't know how long it's going to take. Uh, and I'm not in the mood to wait for that. But yeah, this is the end of this video. We're going to make future videos on Nutica, on optimization with Nutica, about the cache, about other stuff, other features inside of it. So do stay tuned, subscribe to the channel, all right? Let me know what you thought. If there's something you want to see, do let me know, all right, in the comments below. See you guys in the next video.